Now, should it be illegal for the general public to buy gas appliances? Should it also be illegal for the general public to buy spare parts for gas appliances? And should it also be illegal for guys like me who make gas videos and post them on YouTube? Anyway, let's get on with it and find out exactly what I mean in this video. Now, a good friend of the channel, Wayne Burgess, sent me a link from a YouTube video to have a look at because he was very, very concerned about the content of this video. When I had a look at this video, I was gobsmacked because basically in this video was a member of the general public who openly admitted they weren't gas safe registered, repairing their own boiler. Now it wasn't a little repair, something like changing the pump or a diverter valve or a thermistor. It was completely stripping a boiler and replacing the heat engine, heat exchanger. And it was an incredibly detailed video from start to finish. But he missed out all the safety requirements for when you're doing this type of work. Because one, he didn't know what he was doing. And two, he didn't actually have the equipment to do it. Now, I'm not going to name this channel because I don't really think that will serve any point. And also, I don't want any more traffic going to this video so it doesn't get pushed out even more on YouTube. But when I did look at this video, so far, this video has 3,300 views. It's had 43 likes. It's got 49 comments. And this guy has got 51 subscribers. Now, he's only also only done two videos. So basically, <laughs> I don't know whether he's scrapped this channel or not anyway. So I'm gonna go through this video and explain exactly what this guy was doing and how illegal the stuff he was doing. Now, I'm going to be using a few documents to prove that this guy is completely illegal and breaking the law and admitting on YouTube that he's breaking the law. Should that be allowed? Now, if you insult somebody on YouTube and they take offense to it, you can be arrested for it. So, are they health and safety executive and gas safe gonna do anything to this guy for producing a video, putting it on YouTube, who is not gas safe registered and is not competent to be able to do the work. Now, the first document we're going to look at is this fact sheet, what gas safe has produced for the general public, which is a fact sheet to say exactly what work can be done by a non registered engineer. So, the first bit we're going to look at is what gas work can I do myself? Let's start by seeing if you can actually take the case off your old boiler. So, can I take the case off my gas appliance? And gas safe say it depends on whether the case is purely decorative or whether it is an integral part of the appliance. Now, this is exactly what gas safe means. So, we've got two boilers here this is a glow worm, this is a valent. They've both got decorative covers on them. So if we remove this decorative cover, which is only held on with two screws under here, you can now see the gas valve, the fan, the combustion chamber are all behind a, another cover. So when I drop the flap down here, this is what we call the hydro block on the wet side. So the pump, diverter valve, and so on. So technically, a plumber could work on here and an electrician could wire the controls in but obvious things like changing the PCB because that can affect the combustion would have to be done by a gas engineer so that's completely separated from the water set now if I take this cover off which is just held on with one screw here and we drop the flat down 
you can see the hydro block and the wet side is at the bottom here but all the combustion parts of this boiler are on show so the heat exchanger the fan the gas valve they're all there and this part of the boiler goes on to a seal on the back here which you can see is completely damaged so that's what gas safe mean by the two different covers this one technically anybody could work on the pump set on this one only gas engineers can work on the pump set now this is the opening to the guys video and as you can see right at the very bottom it says please note I am not a qualified gas engineer but I am carefully following the ideals boiler manual well let's get into the video and let's see the first illegal thing the guy actually does removing the boiler front is dead easy you've got two screws in these two bottom corners one there and one there which I've removed and then you lift the bottom forward and lift the top up to unhook it and the front just comes off like that now technically the first thing the guy does removing this cover now this is exactly the same boiler as the one he's working on this is a newer version of the boiler when he removes that front cover and drop down the flap you can see here this is the combustion chamber seal so straight away right at the very beginning of this video this guy has technically broken the law by removing the front cover the guy then goes on to say this and this instruction manual seems to uh, cover all boilers but yeah it's, it's it's a really nice manual that comes from ideal and it was left by the installation plumber for me and section 74 is heat engine renewal which is what we're going to follow now this is the manufacturer's instructions that the guy is talking about and if you look at what this is labeled as it says installation and service it doesn't say operating instructions that's completely separate booklet now this is what he can legally use so everything what's in this booklet he can do because this is the user's guide and you can see it's a lot thinner than the manufacturer's instructions so it basically tells you things like what the knobs do it tells you how to use the filling loop if your pressure is low it tells you things like what the fault codes are it even tells you how to unfreeze the condensate in this booklet if it freezes up but it does say in it numerous times contact a gas safe registered engineer to carry out the repairs so this is what you can legally do this is not what you can do unless you are a gas safe registered engineer so this is what he's talking about what the gas engineer left him didn't leave it for him they left it for any engineers who will be working on the appliance to be able to reference and to be able to check it to see if it was actually installed to the manufacturer's instructions now if we have a look what our fact sheet says it says what gas work can I do myself the definition of gas work is quite wide ranging but you can perform the tasks set out by the user instructions provided by the appliance manufacturers that are intended for the user to carry out this would not be a breach of the law now he's talking about the installation and service manual which he shouldn't be reading and shouldn't be using so again he's broken the law he then carries on by saying so the first thing we have to do obviously is to switch off the gas switch off the electrical supplier and drain the boiler now yes obviously you're going to turn the gas off you're going to turn the water off and you're going to drain the boiler when you're working on a heat exchanger but he doesn't mention testing so he doesn't mention carrying out the safe to touch test at the very beginning before you remove the cover he doesn't talk about testing whether he's got safe isolation on the appliance or not because when you drop the flap down here 
all the electrical connections are actually exposed. So if you haven't done a dead test on here and you start messing around, you could actually get electrocuted, even though he could have turned the fuse spur off. And he doesn't mention testing the gas supply. Now again, he's removing this tube here, what's coming to the gas valve. So this can leak gas. So you have to carry out a tightness test before you do any work on the gas because you're disturbing the gas connections. And he doesn't even mention that. So he's not tested the electrics. He's not tested the gas, he's just turned them off. As a trainee gas engineer, that's the first thing we train engineers to do. Isolate and test the gas, isolate and test the electrics. It's not just isolate. So it makes it incredibly dangerous, as well as he's breaking numerous laws. Then in the video he goes on to show the actual component he's bought. He says where he gets it from and even how much it costs and then goes right the way through the box and shows you the components. Now, should this be illegal? Should only gas safe registered engineers be able to buy spare parts like this off the internet? He then goes and shows you in absolute detail step by step how to completely strip the boiler to get the heat engine out. To be fair to the guy, he does an incredibly good job of doing that. And he even found a fault with the new heat exchanger and he retapped the screw holes which hold the bracket on for the gas valve. No gas engineer would do that, I wouldn't have thought, because we wouldn't have the taps on our vans. We would just be taking it back and having a go at uh, the suppliers and ideal for supplying faulty goods. Then he shows you how to put the new sump on to the new heat engine, which is part of the flu system. And yes, again, he shows good tips on how to get it back on and puts it on and shows how easy it is to go back on. He then does everything in reverse order and puts it all back together. Then the video ends, basically. And that goes on there. And also it holds the manifold down. And I've got two new screws to go with that on the rubber. It must be nearly there. Right, well that is the assembly, the reassembly complete. I've got no other bits left to put on. So um, that appears to be it. It's just a matter now of um, refilling it. And I've got my fingers tightly crossed to hope that I don't get any leaks. He doesn't explain about testing what you need to do. Because he's removed the heat engine, he's removed the burner, he's removed this part of the flue system, he's changed the sump, he's moved the gas valve. So you would have to fully commission this appliance. And you would need all the test equipment gas engineers have to be able to do this. He doesn't say anything about the safety we have to go through, the flue gas analysing, the tightness testing again. He, he just doesn't mention any of that. He even has the audacity to say this in the comments. I'm getting pretty fed up with some people banging on about whether I'm gas safe registered. Well, of course not. I think I've made it pretty clear that I'm just a practical guy who likes to fix things myself. I make no claim to be an expert in any way. And though I would post this video to help anyone who has a similar boiler losing pressure, I'm not interested in subscribers. Also, it seems a good subject for my video camera and my video editing software. Regarding safety, the boiler was burning correctly before my work. I have checked the gas joints with detergent solution and I have a CO monitor nearby. So I am quite happy that my boiler is burning safely. I could have called a professional in to check my work and chose not to. But of course, this is always an option. The great thing about social media stuff 
is that you can take or leave it. Now, from his statement, at the beginning, he actually admits he's not gas safe registered. And I guess he's not competent to be able to work on gas boilers. Now, technically, do you need to be gas safe registered to work on your own boiler? No, grey area, but no. Uh, but you do need to be competent to be able to work on there. So what does make you competent? Well, we can now turn to the Gas Safety Installation and Use Regulations 1998, which was amended in 2018, which basically will explain what they want for competency. So I've got part of the regulations here, and this part of the regulations comes in part three, which is qualifications. So we have 312, uh, which says 83, so that's Code of Practice 83. It says, anyone who does work on gas fittings or gas storage vessels must be competent to do so, whether or not they are required to be a member of the approved class of persons. That basically means gas safe registered. Therefore, do-it-yourself gas engineers and those performing favours for friends and relatives all need to have the required competency. The level and range of competency should match the full extent of the work done, but needs only to be sufficient for and relevant to that work. So basically, what that means is, to be competent, you will need to hold the ACS qualification to work on boilers of CCM1, which is basic safety, which also has CPA1 in there now, which is using flue gas analyzers. He will also need to have CEMWAT, which is uh, central heating boilers and water heaters. So, CCM1, CPA1, and CEMWAT to be able to work on that boiler, even if it's his own boiler and is not gas safe registered. Basically, the reason why that is in there is for, say, my engineers. Are they allowed to work on their own boilers? Well, technically, yes. And are they able to work on other people's boilers? Well, yes, they're under my gas safe registration. But if they're not working under my gas safe registration, they are not allowed to work on those appliances for money. But they can do it for family and friends because they hold the relevant competency. Now I've done videos on this before and people still don't believe everything I say. So actually at the beginning of here, in the code of practice, it tells you exactly that, that you must hold the relevant ACS qualifications to be able to work on your own boiler. So this guy has admitted to breaking the law. And where he says the boiler was burning correctly before he did the work, and then burning correctly after he was doing the work, how does he know? Now that boiler, believe it or not, it looks immaculate, it looks new, it isn't. It's quite an old boiler. And this video, like I said at the beginning, is from a year ago. But that boiler was first gen of these. So it's quite an old boiler, but does look absolutely immaculate inside. So I don't exactly know when this actual video was filmed, but it was uploaded a year ago. So how did he know it was burning correctly? Did he flue gas analyze it? Did he do inlet pressures? Did he gas rate it? No, he didn't do any of those tests and he didn't do any of the tests afterwards. So that makes him incompetent, not competent to carry out the work because he didn't do the basic safety checks afterwards. And then he goes on to say, I could have got a gas engineer to actually come out and check his work. Well, if we go back to gas safe's paperwork, which we've been reading out, we can see that that is also illegal for him to get a gas engineer out to check it. And it's also illegal for the gas engineer, if he's knowingly knows the guy's done it, to actually test it. Now, if we look at Gas Safe's fact sheet, in bold writing down here at the bottom, it says, 
It is illegal for someone who is not gas safe registered to fit a gas appliance or do other gas work and then have the work checked by a gas safe registered engineer. Both parties would be breaking the law. So that's our gas safe fact sheet. And this is available for the general public. Now, they've also produced technical bulletin 014 which is basically what gas safe say gas work is. Now here where the HSE do interpretations of the information, at number two it says, it is not acceptable for gas safe registered engineers to knowingly sign off gas work that has been carried out by a person who is not registered in order to circumvent the legal requirements. Where this has occurred, both the registered and unregistered installer may face prosecution. And that's in Gas Safe's Technical Bulletin 014. So, it is illegal for gas engineers to knowingly sign off work done by a non-registered engineer. They could both be prosecuted for that act. Now, and finally on his statement, the guy says he used a soap solution to check for leaks. So maybe he used washing up liquid. Now we've not been able to use washing up liquid in gas to find gas leaks for, well definitely as long as I've been teaching gas and that's been since 1999. Gas engineers don't use this to find leaks because it's corrosive and could corrode the copper. So we use stuff like this, which is a proper formula leak detection fluid. But this is rubbish. Most gas engineers use things like this for detecting leaks. So even that he was wrong. Now let's sum up this video. First of all, hopefully with the proof I've given from the documents, we now know this guy is completely illegal and is breaking the gas laws and could technically be prosecuted. Also, it's incredibly irresponsible to have that mindset that I can fix things myself, I can do it myself. Now, I think I'm quite capable of repairing the brakes and replacing the brakes on my wife's car. I used to do it a lot when I was a kid, but there is no way on earth I would do that now because it would be completely irresponsible of me to put my wife under danger of me trying to fix her brakes. So I'll take it to a car mechanic who knows exactly what they're doing and they've got all the test equipment and knowledge to be able to do the work. So as well as being dangerous, it's irresponsible. Also, he's putting his family at risk and his neighbours at risk because he says he has a CO alarms. Now most CO alarms are installed in the wrong location. They're always running out of batteries and they don't activate until 30 parts per million of CO have been in the room. So, yes, he says he's got a CO alarm and he's happy with that, but is it working? Is it in the right place? Is it in date? Doesn't mention any of that. So the boiler could actually be leaking products of combustion into the room where the boiler is, and he could actually kill his family if there's somebody in the bedrooms above because CO migrates upwards because it's lighter than air when it's at a temperature higher than the room temperature. Also, because he didn't test the gas correctly and because they are quite hard to test where the gas valves are leaking with soapy water, he could have a gas leak, which he might not smell because it's inside the casing of the boiler and it could actually blow the casing off the boiler and kill somebody or injure somebody. So again, not doing the correct tests. It's so irresponsible. Not flue gas analyzing a gas appliance after you've changed the heat exchanger and you've played with the uh, actual burner. It's, a, it's the, one of the biggest no-nos of being a gas engineer because he says it was burning correctly. How does he know? You can't see it. You can't smell it, you can't taste it. You need equipment to be able to say whether the CO, the CO2 and the ratios are correct for that appliance. Because 
He could be putting too much CO2 and CO in the air, and he could also be very, very inefficient, that boiler, if it's not set up correctly. Now, I know there's going to be loads of you out there who's going to go, eh, you're only bitter because he's got more views than you on your videos. <laughs> well, <laughs> he did a very good job of his video, I have to say that. When you watch, you watch the video, the way he films it, the way he does it, it is, you can tell he has got mechanical background. But, does that make it okay? No. And especially, putting it on YouTube. Now, should gas appliances not be bought by the general public? And should spare parts not be bought by the general public? Well, this is a massive reason why spare parts shouldn't be able to be bought by the general public because if he couldn't buy the heat exchanger then he wouldn't be able to change it and again there's going to be loads of you out there who'll say oh, you're talking rubbish about the rules and the regulations because i can do whatever i want in my own home well if you create an explosion and you kill somebody you're going to go to prison for a very very long time and do you want to put your family under that gauntlet of how you're going to be killed or not because I certainly wouldn't want to do that so the last thing should I stop doing gas videos and putting them on YouTube so people like this guy can watch them and then get information for that and then do his own stuff well that's a massive thing I do YouTube videos to help my trainees because they need to learn and they need to learn the correct way of doing it. I do go through all the safety aspects of when I do a video and I always make sure that everybody is aware that you have to be gas safe registered and competent to do so to work on gas appliances. So put out in the comments what you think guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.